A dark future. Lost to an evil overlord. The Orange Crush Nation enslaved humanity. With no one left to help, a new warrior approaches. As the leader of Task Force 69 stepped forward, he noticed the faint smell of orange crush in the air. Thankfully, he had the Brigade Arms BM-9. The mission objective was clear. Search and rescue Task Force 420. Avoid open conflict with the Orange Crush Nation. And above all else, do not get captured by enemy forces. After two weeks of searching, there were signs of Task Force 420. A war mate EV that was used by their scouting parties. The smell of Orange Crush was stronger now. The scout prepared for an ambush. <laughs> Task Force 69! You made it past my minions! <laughs> but you are no more! Take it from me. Your journey ends here! I got you. Twenty nine rounds. This is actually a twenty nine round magazine that we picked up 29 yeah seriously stop count them right now check it out no it really is here look check it out 29 rounds what's up guys jake with tn tactical we'll coming with a special special gun review today we are talking about the brigade all arms bm9 this is an ar pattern nine millimeter pistol Pistol, mind you, not today, ATF. You know, I gotta be honest with you, this is one that we've had on the channel for, what, maybe a year and a half, two years? Something, Something like, like that. that. It's one I've been kind of hiding from you because I really just wanted to do it justice. So, this is not a first shots video, this is a full review because we have probably put in a couple thousand rounds at this point. I was gonna point. say thousands. Yeah, between now and two years ago. I wanted to just give you my thoughts on it, let you know how I feel about it and why I think this might be one of the best AR9s that you can get currently on the market. I found this company and I was inspired. And it was not just because of the gray tungsten Cerakote finish. Which we know you love. I do love it. If you know me, if you've been a part of the channel, you know. I'm a fan of that color. I was looking for something that wasn't exactly going to be priced out of my budget. And at the same time, I didn't want to just go with necessarily like one of the cheapest budget options out there. This is kind of like a good little mid-tier option that I had never heard of until I was starting to look into AR9s and suddenly these guys popped up on my radar. So today, we're going to talk about why you may want to get one of these. The beauty of the 
BM9. Ooh, you got a neat little ruby reflection onto your eye just then. It was real spiritual like. Yeah. Beep. So just so you see, we are unloaded, clear. Well, you can't see it yet, so hang on. Oh. We are unloaded, clear. All right, so let's talk about this particular one. We picked this up around early 2021 for roughly around 700 bucks. Just checking online today. It is now currently going for $900. Unfortunately, prices have gone up with inflation and pandemic stuff and all that. Like we always do, we're going to start with just the tip. And we're going to go talk about all the specs from just the tip all the way to the butt. Tips and butts. The tip is going to actually have the most controversy around it. So let's talk about that. This flash hider compensator, whatever you want to call it, is threaded at one and a half by 28. It did not come with the Brigade Arms BM9. This is something I actually got after Mark, I think on eBay or something. This thread pattern of this, what I've got right here is one and a half by 28. However, it does not come stock one and a half by 28. If you look closely here, you're going to see there's actually a little machined part. You see that little ring in the barrel around the barrel there? Hold up. I will get a great view of that. I do, in fact, see it, yes. So that's actually where the barrel meets this little end attachment I got here. I bought this little metal piece that basically turns it from one and a half by 36, which is what the barrel's actually threaded at, to one and a half by, by ugh, 28. We talk one and a half. It's a half by 28, excuse me. The problem I had, though, was twofold. Number one, I really didn't want to get another piston for suppressors to attach half by 36. Number two, I try, I actually went ahead and bought a piston that was half by 36. And when I was actually attaching my suppressor on there, the barrel was actually too short. It would not actually give enough clearance to put the suppressor on. So what I ended up having to do is in order to number one, meet that clearance, number two, use a more common thread pattern. I bought this little part on eBay that actually is like a female to male where it goes from half by 36 to half by 28. In addition to that, it does kind of give a little extension to the barrel itself enough so that I could actually thread this on. Otherwise, I wasn't able to thread anything on because the handguard itself is too skinny to put any suppressors or anything on that hand. You see the little the red that's thread locker there. there? Yeah, that's actually where that ring of thread lock, that's where the actual end of the barrel is right there. And so it's way down in there, making it impossible to attach a suppressor or anything to this. So I went ahead and got that little piece on there to give myself about an extra inch or so of barrel length. Otherwise, this is a five and a half inch barrel. Now it's kind of technically a six inch barrel. You don't actually get this little flash hire compensator. That doesn't make sense. Instead, they give you this. This is actually a fake suppressor. The way it works is it actually comes in over the barrel and actually fits up over the barrel and comes inside the handguard there. It's just there to make it look cool. Looks cool, but not very functional. Now the problem I have with that fake suppressor more than anything is, in case you can't tell by the markings, that fake suppressor was a complete to get out of the, off the actual barrel. It took everything. We tried heat strap wrenches, is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. We tried strap wrenches. We, you know what we ended up having to do and cause these marks? Getting one of those big ass plumber's wrenches that just cranks down on it. And we had the whole a thing. A pipe in. wrench. You used a pipe wrench. Yeah. We ended up having to use a damn pipe wrench, which puts these marks in it. And we had this thing clamped in a grip and we just pipe wrenched it and just cranked it out. We eventually got off, but my God. I mean, I get why they did it. It definitely looks kind of cool, but I mean, it just, it's, it, it, that's it. It just looks tactic cool. And I didn't want tactic cool. I wanted actual tactical. Tactical. It. You okay? <laughs> I wish I could have got that on camera. That brass sat there and burned my shoulder, but I didn't move. That's I didn't right. move to bring you guys a steady shot. <laughs> God. So like I stated earlier, we do have a five and a half inch barrel with this particular model. They do make models with longer barrels, like seven inches and even 16 inches if you want carving. They have got what they call a patented, if you don't believe me, there it is right there. It says patented rail U-lock 
So this handguard's five inches and it's got these slots that kind of look like key mod slots. It's supposed to be a patented design that can fit either key mod or M lock. Now I've got M lock here for my O light. Don't hold that against me, guys. You do have rail up top here, Picatinny all the way up top, but it is a free float rail. We have gone ahead and put a nice little hand stop right here, just so that way when we're shooting, if we're just shooting like this, we don't accidentally have a little, we don't accidentally have a little accident there, and little Timmy loses his fingers. That would be terrible. So hand stop there, just as a little bit of a form of safety there. That was bought by us, just put on there after market as well as obviously the O-Lite that didn't come with it either. We just stuck it on there because, you know, we want to be tactical. Does it even work? Yes. No. No. Oh. There it goes. Now it works. Thanks, O-Lite. Really good reliability there. You do have a little QD spot there for a sling attachment right there, as well as on the other side right there for those that are left-handed. Now, with this particular set, there's no other actual attachment points for your sling so you'd have to run a single point or if you do like we do there it's kind of beat up but we actually run the sling through there as well so we have two points like that cool thing about this because it is an ar9 pattern it does take a lot of your typical ar15 lower receiver parts same bolt release it can use the same safety lever ar standard ar15 triggers this is just a regular mil spec trigger don't quote me on this but i don't think it actually comes with a mag pull grip so not sure on that. I'll take I'll put text on the bullet you know for sure on that. The text is right here. <sighs> now we, Why well, do you hate that so I, much? I put <laughs> on the Holosome 510C that we have up top here. You know, it is an AR9, so you've got your, if I can get it open here, you've got your buffer tube there. And this is like a little pistol blade. See that there? Shockwave Technologies blade pistol stabilizer Blah. it's currently the month of october so as far as i know this is still legal as of right now but just be advised whenever you're watching this video it may not be kosher of course you got your typical charging handle here nothing too crazy just like the same stock mill spec stuff it's kind of it's kind of cheap kind of flimsy and all that all right so like we always do we are going to do the quick trigger scene so just like a typical AR-15, you pull that charging handle back. Right here it is a standard mil spec trigger. So you pull here and you've got a little bit of a movement there. And then it just clicks. Reset. It's about three millimeters of reset there. And it feels roughly about seven to eight pounds. Always remember when you are using a suppressor on a PCC or any kind of fixed barrel setup, you get the fixed barrel spacer and don't use the the Nelson device that has like a little spring in there that'll mess up your PCC. You might have a baffle strike. The more you know. Because it is an AR9, this is a direct blowback system. So unlike typical AR15, there's no gas impingement system. There's no gas going through a tube and back to help assist. It's just direct blowback. Not delay blowback, just direct blowback. So because of that, you got a little bit more recoil than some other guns, like typically like roller delay stuff, like like an MP5, like MP5s or Strybox got their third gen. This is the season of uh, little PCC sub guns like this. While we can get them, gotta catch them all. All in all, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's your typical, you know, aluminum upper, lower. You've got your one tenth twist barrel. I mean, it's all typical stuff that you would normally see on the AR9. But for some reason, this one just feels to run really smooth compared to some other stuff. We really don't have too many hangups or any issues with types of ammo we shoot. And uh, we've actually been able to make this run with an, uh, a force. The more I'm glad we threw that in the river with all that other stuff, aren't we, you? We, well, thankfully we made all that old footage. Right. That we can show off as a new video, but it's from before. Right. Yeah, definitely is first 100 subscribers on there will actually get a free patch to go on your uh to go on your rig man yeah man go on your kit gives you some stat bonuses and some penalties of course all Possibly. things fairly balanced so if you want to help for us check that out and uh you also get some extra content and you'll get to know us a little bit more on a personal level check us out on patreon for now we're going to shoot this 15 round mag, Glock mag.
that is the one thing and, and i will say this stylistically that's the one thing i do not like about this gun really ah uh, you're the, the minority on that one this this whole big like block right here that whole thing that would normally accept you know a two two three five five six magazine has been left as is up here and you know you've got this big blocky area where the nine uh magazine goes in i just i don't love the look of it it's maybe, weird maybe it helps with recoil they like it when it takes a glock mag i like that it takes a glock mag i just don't like the receiver and the shape of it i think it's sort of ugly yeah well <laughs> Bad well red. Beauty's in the high of, eye of the high. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Feels like it's got some kick to it. A little bit now, honey. Supposed to have last round bolt hold open. Obviously, it didn't do it there for us. Lies. So. Complete lies. A little questionable there. That's all right, though. It's a, um, hmm, a little questionable. <laughs> Recoil is definitely more than a roller delayed system would have, like an MP5 or a Strybog or something like that. But it is a direct blowback. So that's expected. You're going to feel a little bit more jump in the barrel than in those other platforms. Let's see how she do. I'm going to tell you. I do not like this shape of stock. I apply force here, so I've got this tiny little surface area cutting into my shoulder, rather than being a good boy and doing it the way I'm supposed to. It's just my way. I don't know. I've had nine millimeter handguns that uh, kick a little less than this. So, Brigade Arms BM9. My final thoughts. If you're looking to get an AR9 platform, I think this isn't really that bad of a choice. You're looking at roughly a price point about eight or nine hundred dollars at this point with the market conditions. But if you're looking for something with a familiar manual of arms like an AR-15, this is definitely the way to go. Most AR-15s, or in this case AR-9s, you can really customize it with whatever you want as far as triggers and you know slide releases and attachments and all that good stuff. And you are getting features for the money you're paying for. I mean, the thing's reliable. It seems like a sewing machine, really. So well, I really like it. I like the compact design of it. I like being able to get all up in here like this and just have something. It might be a really good choice to have, especially like at home for home defense, because it is so compact. You can get up in there, stick like a Holosun or EOTech on here. And it might be a really good choice for you just to kind of have something that's really lightweight enough and easy to go around corners and stuff too with that shorter barrel. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've not had any issues with reliability. Um, you know, you just, like a typical AR-15, keep it clean, keep it clear and all that good stuff and it should run for you for a long time. Guys, if you enjoy that kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Did you pick up a Brigade Arms BM9? I'd love to hear from you. We will see you next time. Wow.